Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Uh, today we're going to talk about a 300,000 year old, largely intact skull found in Southeast China called the HLD skull or, or the Hualongdong skull, which is named after where it was found. And it was found in a collapsed cave. Yeah, this throws another monkey wrench or, well, I mean, there are several monkey wrenches, but th this throws like the argument into a loop here. And this is a virtual reconstruction of the of the skull, and you can see how how largely intact it is, like uh, Denny Sovins and um, other hu human uh, hominins. Rather, we only we're lucky if we find like a piece of a jawbone or whatever. But this one is pretty um, intact, so they're they've been able to glean a lot of information from it because of it. So this article says it says it possesses a unique combination of features to make the fossil tantalizing clue to east asia's diverse hominin history and there was a lot going on in asia there there are homo erectus like over a million years ago and there's the denisovans i've talked about a bunch of times there are neanderthals around there homo sapiens and then hom homo flores sciensis if you count um the philippines as asia and that the Luzonensis, the the other one that I talked about, that's also the second dwarf hominin, dwarf-like hominin that we found, and a bunch of other archaic humans. So, what they found was at this collapse cave was this skull, and also uh, fo fossils of archaic of other archaic humans and other animals, and stone tools, and that's probably the number one thing that they find are these stone tools in Asia and. The ones near the Yellow River are one way. Like they, they, they're one classification of tools, although I think there are a few anomalies in there. But for the most part, it's <clears throat> the same type of tool. And then when you go higher, like in the Tibetan Plateau, which shouldn't be considered China, it should be considered its own thing, um, they had those different uh, tools that were associated with Denisovans. And that's been um, the pattern in China for the most part. They find... Uh, the animal bones and animal um, like these chip marks that are indicative of uh, humans uh, chipping away at these these animals and they also find these tools but never like a full archaic human skeleton uh, but so that's what what makes this uh, discovery so much more exciting is because it's a largely intact skull the date that they came to was 300,000 years old and how they did determined that was using uh, uh, geology so the mineral deposits and other materials in the cave they were able to uh, figure out that um, it was a, around 300,000 years old so th some of the conclusions that they that they uh, uh, came to so HLD6 this uh, skull in question they have traits consistent with both Homo sapiens and archaic humans. And when I, when we use I, when I say archaic humans, or when they say archaic humans, they're talking about humans that predate uh, Homo sapiens. This is where the interesting uh, co conversation comes in because which is it? What was this? Uh, is this a missing link, or is it was this a, a weird Homo sapiens, or was this an archaic human who was evolving? Or is it a mixture of the two? So um, there are two different camps. One who believes that there is a missing link still out there and that humans do evolve. And then there's another camp that, well, no, there are a bunch of different humans and we don't know when they began or when they ended, but they were all able to, capable to mate. So anything you find that's consistent with either Homo sapiens or a more, quote, archaic human is just a result a consequence of them in interbreeding so it's not like this linear or this progressive evolution that's going on so th those are the two camps so w some of the specific uh, uh traits that they have are a low and wide cranial vault which is imprecisely called the skull cap the low and wide nasal aperture so the opening uh of the skull for your nose and then they don't have uh third molars or if they do they're reduced so those are all traits of early humans. They're using the, the term transitional. They think that the, there are certain transitional traits toward AMHs, anatomically modern humans, or us. And they had a relatively fat, flat face and somewhat of a chin. 
So uh, the chin is more of a homo sapiens type thing, a, a pronounced chin. Uh, but the flat face thing is interesting too because um, a lot of people in that area have flat faces. And so, it, 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 again, it's like the um, people who live in Tibet now, they have they inherited a gene that allows them to live in, at high altitude. So um, this is the same idea. These There are people back in the remote past who had flat faces and chins and now there are people who live there who have flat faces and chins it's a it's that simple in this case the ev granted the evolution of the chin has been largely debated um, but everyone agrees that only homo sapiens have prominent chins obviously there must have been another human species out there that had a chin to some degree the partial Zhu Cheng skulls from central China, I think I did a video on this, they're at least 100,000 years old. By the way, this skull, if it, if it is 300,000 years old, that mean, that puts it around the time of the Jebel Urhud man found in Morocco, the 315,000 year old guy. So again, we have this huge, uh, we have this weird uh, scenario here where humans were as widespread as Morocco and as it was to China so all, all of Asia and at, le at the very least northern Africa was inhabited by humans 300,000 years or so ago um, well anyway so the Zhu Cheng skull uh, or skulls they're about a hundred thousand years old and they have a different collection of mosaic traits themselves and same thing as this uh, H uh, HLD skull they have archaic and modern hum human anatomy traits and also that of neanderthals so there's it seems like throughout the years there's been so much mixing going on between hominin that again if they have viable offspring then how different could they be that's the billion dollar question right there the hld fossils are also by no means the oldest hominin remains found in east asia multiple specimens of homo erectus and related lineages have been unearthed going back more than 1.6 million years uh, i just mentioned that the 2018 study of more than 100 tools from sheng chen suggested that archaic hominins were in china 2.1 million years ago although they don't have any fossils dating to that but they're just going by the tools and the fact that there are tools left behind that old in geological strata that's that old that's like everything but a smoking gun almost I, I mean i consider that a smoking gun like who who's making those tools then like who's smart enough to do that it, it had to be some type of hominin and then a couple of skull fragments pop up and molars pop up and then this this intact skull pops up and then you can kind of put two and two together so from many one or from one many this is the decades old um uh argument here so the article goes into the African origin model, the RAO model. According to this hypothesis, anatomically modern humans evolved in Africa and then in the last 50 to 80,000 years spread across Eurasia, displacing or absorbing isolated populations of archaic humans who are still living there. So it's almost like uh, that's within 100,000 years, that's pretty recent. And when you, t when you think about Mount Toba erupting and, and destroying everybody about 70,000 years ago, it, it, I guess it does seem pretty, um, that part at least seems pretty plausible. But over the last 10 years or so, new fossil finds outside Africa have pushed back the dispersal date, like the one in Israel, this one in China, etc. The uh, the Denny Sobins. Though not all REO uh, proponents accept evidence of an earlier departure. So th again, this is this uh, argument, this ongoing debate that's going on. I mean, if you can call it that. Um, the Mislia one partial jaw was the one in Israel is talking about, uh, that, which is 170,000 years old. So they must have wandered that right there, if that's true. The recent out of Africa theory is out the door because Israel's out of Africa, albeit very close to Africa, it's still out of Africa, and they found humans there 170,000 years ago. So, yeah, uh, go figure. Uh, meanwhile, an alternate model of human evolution, multi-regionalism, or regional continuity has gained traction. That's the, the proposed uh, hypothesis now. When Homo erectus, erectus left Africa 2 million years ago, these early explorers didn't die out. They fanned across Eurasia and continue to evolve, eventually becoming Homo sapiens before other populations of Homo sapiens left Africa. So basically, Homo erectus became Homo sapiens according to this model, and they left Africa way before like 2 million or so years ago. And that, that makes sense because they found Homo erectus fossils 
or remains in both Africa and China. So that that is reconciled within that theory. Um, people disagree over some of the core issues of our deep past, including how we define a, a species and what makes us human. So yeah, that that's the other part of this uh, discussion. If you want to have a discussion about about human origins and where we came from and whether or not we evolved, um, you have to define what a species is. And um, I think at least part of a species is there they can have viable grandchildren. So if they can have viable grandchildren, then you've that's got they've got to be within the same species, right? Well, not a lot of people uh, agree with that or acknowledge that. Um, the last two years, some researchers have proposed a third model that tries to reconcile the dueling models and the expanding fossil record, acknowledging the complexity of our origin story. Yeah, there's probably, there, there's going to be a third model that has to acknowledge, again, all how complex everything is and not dumb everything down. But again, that's kind of how we make progress. At the same time, we destroy the old model and build a better one, although that one eventually gets destroyed and get and we build on top of that at least ideally that's what should happen um it also has features that hint at traits unique to um anatomically modern humans which have not been found outside of africa earlier than about 180,000 years ago um at about 300,000 years old hld6 may be evidence of regional continuity which is uh, again the recent proposed hypothesis uh in in light of all the recent excavations and all the recent evidence a transitional human that represents the evolution of archaic East Asian Homo erectus populations into East Asian AMHs. So their their theory is Homo erectus leaves Africa, they end up in China. The Homo erectus population that ends up in China evolves into over the course of I don't know 1.6 million years, evolves into Homo sapiens us and. That this is essentially what's being proposed as the missing link of Homo erectus 1.6 plus million years ago in China to Homo sapiens now. Um, I don't know if that's even true or not. I think I'm. I don't know if they evolved or not. It just there's not enough evidence for that. Y yeah, it's easy to find something a skull like this and say that oh this is the the missing link and the evolution, or it could easily be a. Mi a like adaptation over a long period of time, like I said, with the Tibetans and the high altitude gene. And w along with that could be different phenotypes. It's not like they're growing like a fin, a, a dorsal fin or anything like that. They're, they still, they they said so themselves that they c share traits between the Homo erectus and other archaic humans and anatomically modern humans. So maybe there's Denisovans come into play here, maybe, or maybe Neanderthals come into play here. And... Maybe even Homo sapiens already from 300,000 years ago already uh, uh, play a role in here. We just don't know. So the, uh, that's why I wouldn't say that it's, uh, I wouldn't say either way, but I'm leaning toward, oh, I'm leaning away from evolution just because there's not enough evidence for that. It's just, um, it, it, there's no smoking gun evidence for that. And if you say that this is smoking gun evidence for evolution, then I would say that you'd need to come up with more uh, hard, hard facts and details. That's just my opinion. Um, so there was a study that was, uh, this study rather was uh, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which I'll have a link to uh, in the description. And here's the other uh, reconstruction, the more colorful reconstruction of it. And you can see this is like the nose. It, it's very, um, I mean, they have the pr the pronounced brow and everything, but I mean, it it's very, pretty similar to to us. So, um, and it has a flat face and everything and the chin. That's a big deal. Um, but anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think about this, about um, anything uh, in China that's old. If you guys know anything about tools or, or, or early humans or whatever, let me know. And if you guys have a link, I'm all I'm all eyes and ears for that, and I might talk about it in the next video. So uh, uh, enjoy your day, and I'll see you guys later.